Hi YouTube, welcome to Your Perspective. This is Megan, aka Sabirisary, and today we're talking about spirit keeping. So one of the um, things that was brought up in this topic was this website. And the website is, I think, called like Creepy Hollows or something like that. So the idea behind this spirit keeping, um, this idea about attaching, binding a spirit to an object, um, is something that this website claims that they kind of started and, and created. And maybe I'm getting it wrong. Their, their website is, is a little confusing in that way. I, I don't agree with that. Um, that's something that, for me, I, it's not true. <laughs> so um, they didn't they didn't start it. Um, so spirit keeping is something that has been around for a very very long time. We even see evidence of this uh, as far back as you know our mythologies. I mean, when we look at things like genie bottles. So the idea of a genie bottle is having a spirit uh, and a genie, a, a jinn, uh, bound to an object like a lamp. Um, you can also have gin of other things as well. Gin can kind of be imbued to just about any object, but typically it's it's a lamp in most in most mythologies. So you know the, this idea of being able to bind um, spirits and elementals and things like that to objects is very 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 old. So typically speaking, uh, the way that I have ever used spirit keeping was to imbue essences. I don't believe in uh, binding a spirit uh, to anything. I have had lots of instances in which um, spirits have inhabited things uh, that I have owned and they have willingly done so. So that's been on their own accord. Um, but uh, without consent, binding a spirit to something I believe is doing harm and I won't do that. So the difference though would be Obviously, if this was in a negative connotation, like you were doing something to punish a spirit or to protect yourself. Um, so typically speaking, I would never do anything punishing. I, I don't tend to go that route. I'm not saying I would never or I could not, but it, it's not what I do. Uh, however, one thing that I can see doing is um, doing a binding, I guess, so to speak, in self-defense. So that is something that I could certainly see. I, I've definitely used binding spells in self-defense before. I have taken into account what's going on around me and what's happening and I've released things when need be. So I definitely am not against the idea of binding a spirit to something if it's in self-defense. And then once the threat of you know, your safety, your personal safety is gone, then obviously um, releasing that. I don't think that we should be binding spirits to things uh, indefinitely um, without their consent. So that's just me personally. Uh, I do like the idea though of binding essences uh, to things. I think that that can be very useful. I know I've done that quite frequently with travel altars. I have bound essences to different objects so that I can use them for ritual and for spell work when I don't have all those tools around me. So that's something that I personally have done, which is a little bit outside the realm of spirit keeping, but it is sl slightly similar. So I thought I'd bring it up as something that I, I do, 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 yeah. Um, so I, I'm just not uh, big into the spirit keeping world. I just am not a, not a huge fan of it. I, I'm really big in into consent and regardless of whether or not the spirit was ever a human being um, for me being a vegan as well they are all worthy of being able to give their consent so I would not uh, whether it's elemental whether it's a demon whether it's you know a a, a simple sprite I'm not gonna bind anything to something without their consent um, for my own personal use. Uh, so not for me, um, but I certainly welcome in um, different spirits if um, something wants to inhabit and I feel comfortable with that and I have a relationship with that spirit, then I will absolutely. For example, I have ancestors who oftentimes will come uh, for different periods of time and will inhabit. So there are different times uh, of life within my 
my tradition, particularly around coming of age, where ancestor spirits will come in and they actually inhabit the home, different parts of the home uh, for a period of weeks uh, during that coming of age. So it's very important, it's very symbolic and, and it's fabulous and it, it's a wonderful time because you're surrounded by, by spirits who love you and who care about you and are bringing you forward uh, in your life. So. So that's a, a way uh, of spirit keeping. So, but certainly spirit keeping was not created um, by this by this one website. You know, it has been around for a very, very long time in different incarnations. Um, I mean, I'm sure people can put down in the comments below. Uh, numerous cultures, numerous people um, have. It's been throughout time there has been spirit keeping, it, multiple uh, media references. I mean, it, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so I so I personally have a, a book. Uh, very, very old, old uh, grimoire tome uh, that came out long, long, long before uh, the website produced their book that has an entire section on binding demons to objects. So uh, that's something that uh, definitely has been around for a very, very long time. So that is it. We are on holiday break, everybody. Um, so I, I will actually be um, visiting uh, family back in the Northeast uh, for about a week. So I'm so nervous if people have seen the the weather uh, recently, I guess over the weekend, the Northeast is gonna get some crazy snow. So to all of you in the snow, I am so sorry. Um, and yeah, so enjoy your holiday, uh, whatever you might be celebrating. And yeah, as always guys, have a fabulous rest of your week and blessed be and aloha.